Bursa Marsteller specializes in clients in crisis, and certainly BP qualifies for that. The PR firm's chairman of U.S. corporate practices joins me now. He is Jason Schechter. And Jason, we know what Congress wanted to accomplish with this hearing. Right. Shaming Hayward, shaming BP, putting him on trial. What did BP want to get out of this, and, and did it succeed? Well, I, I think Tony Hayward probably accomplished what Tony Hayward wanted to accomplish, which was to give brief, nonspecific answers to the questions and to avoid making any blunders. The problem with that strategy is that it's not very reassuring to the millions of people who are watching sure. who see, you know, who want accountability, they want responsibility, and they want to see answers to their questions. And what's unfortunate about that strategy is that BP had just started to build up some goodwill the day before by establishing the $20 billion fund. Uh, and of course, they went into the hearing with a lot of, with I think 66 I don't knows. And, yeah. and so it started to undo a bit of the, the goodwill the that they did. Momentum. Yeah, exactly. And, and so that's what's really unfortunate about it. And of course, Hayward was being advised by his legal counsel to be sure. non specific. Would it have been better, I wonder, for Hayward to just say, be honest, my lawyer advised me not to answer when asked a specific what if kind of question? I mean, uh, yeah, would that be I, better? I think that's, that's acceptable. I think the larger problem with these hearings is that it's easy to go in and say, well, it's just theatrics, right? It doesn't matter. When, of course, it matters. You're sending a message at the end of this hearing to all of your stakeholders as a company, to your customers, to investors, in this case, to the victims of the spill. And so I think in this case, it's certainly, you know, it's understandable for, for some of those answers from a legal perspective. But I think it would have been smarter to go in with also some concrete programs, concrete steps that they're doing on safety, what they're doing, uh, maybe an update on the investigation, really kind of some, some red meat for, uh, for Congress to really be able to have something to respond to. And I don't think they did that. Now, you often hear how presidents can turn unfortunate events into opportunity. We can think of President Obama, for instance, uh, laying out his energy policy, policy in his sure. Oval Office address the other night. Um, can a company like BP do that too? Is there an opportunity to change the conversation to something positive for them right now? I, I think there is. I mean, of course, no company wants to be in this situation, right? And I, and I think, you know, ultimately you want to avoid these situations in the first place. But of course, being proactive, I think, is, is always a strategy for a company to take to show that they're really, uh, they own the situation, they're driving the news cycle, they're taking concrete steps, and they're really getting ahead of what will ultimately come from Congress and some of these other parties uh, anyway. So I think that's, that is always possible for a company. Um, but, you know, it's tough to see it here. How much of the problem is a, is a cultural one? You, BP's Tony Hayward is British. Carl sure. Henrik Svonberg is not American or British. Um, and his comments about little people was very unfortunate. Right. That didn't translate well. How it much didn't. of that is, is a cultural thing? Uh, I, I think some of it's a cultural thing. And I know yesterday some of the congressmen were quick to say, well, this is how we say it in the U.S. versus this is how we say mm -hmm. it in the U.K. Um, but ultimately, I think there's also a, a universal understanding that you know companies need to be decisive and they need to kind of show they own these crisis situations. I don't think it matters whether that's being done in the UK or the US or another part of the world. Uh, you know, I think I think ma managing uh, situations well is, is a universal issue. Sure, sure. Now, BP has been really clear about saying it's not time to replace Tony Hayward just yet, but should he continue to be the face of the company on this particular issue? Well, I think, it, it, you know, for, in terms of replacing him, obviously, I, I don't think they're going to take any action until they've capped the well, right? I think they want to show they have a, a steady management in place. I think, you know, to your point, the real challenge is who is going to be the face of BP going forward, given all of the reputational hits that, that Tony Hayward's taken. I think those are undeniable hits. Uh, and I think the company has to now say, okay, can we have new faces um, that are going to really help tell the story, show what we're doing, uh, and, and bring some kind of credibility to the issue. Mm, and presumably they're grooming those new faces and those new voices. I, I'm sure they are. All right. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Jason Schechter of Burson Marsteller.